Edmund Lee asks, can you play Infinite Flight Simulator mobile? I would love to see a real pilot play it. Yeah, sure. How hard could it be? Oh man, this is really short final. Uh, flare? No, nope. we're going fast. No, 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 no. That's a really horrible start to this game. Coming up. Hey, 7-4 crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey. I'm a 747 pilot. My channel, 7-4 Gear, is all about aviation. Today, I'm gonna play Infinite Flight. I am not sponsored by them in any way, but I read the comment, I thought, it'd be a cool video to make. So, let's get into it. All right, so I'm in my iPad here. Let's go ahead and log on. Infinite Flight. There it is. All right, four ninety nine. I guess that's pretty reasonable. So, a thumbprint. I I love how they do the thumbprint here because it makes it so much easier than having to remember my password every time. All right, let's see how this game is. Fly solo. I watched something on this earlier online. So one seventy two. I want to fly that. I think they got a seven forty seven in here. 400, Air France, Air India, there's got to be uh, options here. Okay, so, man, they got a lot of different options. This is really cool, actually. I'll do this a generic one here. That way I can not get in trouble by my employer. Okay, so we got that. Let's go fly. Doesn't look a lot like a 747, but I'm sure you saw the mean comments video where I messed that up. So. Now we'll get into the flight deck here. There it is. I think there's a way to move it backwards so I can see. Yeah, here we go. Sweet. Um, I'll look around. That's kind of what the overhead panel looks like. Uh, there's no red light like you see there on that bottom left. That, that, that doesn't exist. That's not. And they got kind of different colors. Oxygen mask. Now that right there, that's actually where we always put our bag. So that always usually has a bag of some sort in it because we have our flight bag in there. Oh crap, I'm moving. Hold on. Let me stop this so I'm not running away here. Okay. Okay, so yeah, this looks a lot like the flight deck. I'm going to put my flaps out. That way I can Go put my flaps out that way. I'm ready for takeoff. We got the parking brake set. Okay, let's see what else is in here. I didn't realize we'd be on the runway without the parking brake set. That's a little crazy. And that little cubby hole that you see right there, that's actually that's actually a real thing. On some planes, it's a camera, but on the freighters, it's, there's no camera there. We just put the uh, napkins and other r random things there. And uh, yeah, that's what it looks like back there case where we keep the books and manuals and things like that uh, I mean this looks it's pretty accurate as far as for how it looks let's see here yeah I mean the colors are a little bit some of the colors are a little bit different and and when we're on the runway there we don't have that that center pedestal this one right here that's actually not illuminated we don't we don't have that illuminated when we're getting ready to um, to fly so that, uh, that screen would normally be, be blacked out at, at this stage of everything. And uh, heading, the heading, the, the magenta line, that, pur that, uh, that purple line, that actually would normally be centered onto the runway. I'm not sure how, how to do that or if I can, but that's normally how that would, that would be going. So let's see if we can uh, get this thing up and flying here. All right, normally you set the power right about here. Technically, it's right under the, the N1 indicator, gets it going, and then we hit a, the toga button that's just on the top there, which doesn't put you at 100%. That just a little bit, a little overkill here. Well, let's get it rolling. All right. Good call. We should be able to rotate by now. We're pretty fast. I'm not sure what our weight is. Up, up, and away. It's actually not the official official call out that we use. We use <laughs> positive rate, and then we do gear up. Get 
that up. Normally that that handle would move right there, but I guess uh, some of the stuff isn't moving, but that's fine. Well, that's cool. It's got little boxes to fly into. Now, normally at this stage, the autopilot would go on. We'd engage uh, the lateral navigation, vertical navigation. I can't. We normally don't fly on uh, vertical speed, especially on departures. And uh, I'm going a little bit fast here. But it should be pulling back. Normally we use auto throttle, so I'm not quite sure. Oh, goody. Overspeed warning. Oh, God. <laughs> Slow that down a little bit. Yeah, that's not that's not good. But yeah, normally when you, you'd climb out and you'd be on a vertical speed and it would be maintaining the speed that you had programmed into the system. We're not using vertical speed. Get out of this. And what, what we'll do is I'll, I'll go here and I'll do the approach. But yeah, normally when you're climbing out, you're climbing out on a VNAV. So it's flying the VNAV path and it's holding the speeds. And as you're increasing the speed and taking out the flaps, it keeps accelerating. With the 747 in the US and in some other countries, they let you do a high speed climb. So you can actually exceed 250 knots in the climb if you get permission from air traffic control. All right, let's do some approaches here and see how this looks. We'll hit this short final button. That should get me there. Oh man, this is really short final. Uh, flare? No, nope. we're going fast. No, 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 no. no. That's a really horrible start to this game. I don't even, that is not good. All right, let's try this again. I was trying to flare there, but it just wasn't, it wasn't coming back and we were going too fast. Let me try that again. All right, and uh, pull the power back. We're still going really fast here. That's 50, looking better. 30, 30, nope, that's 10. fast flared up. And I think we're bouncing right now. That is not good, but I just need to get the rudder to push over, but it doesn't want to seem to go. Okay, there, the thrust reversers are going, so that's good. But the throttle doesn't go forward like that, but that's fine. And I just can't quite figure out how to do that. Get the rudder, there we go. It's, it's strange, normally the rudder's more effective at higher speeds, it's, so it's a little strange that on this it seemed like it didn't want to work at a high speed and now it's working. And the, I don't understand why the thrust reversers keep showing the thrust going forward because that's not how it works, but that's fine. Let's get myself centered up here on the runway, and uh, then we'll do this. We'll do this one more time. What you're looking for is a countdown, like 50, 40, 30, 20, pause, pause, 10. If you hear that as you're coming into land, that's basically exactly what you're looking for. When you're hearing what you heard me doing, which was 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, it's going to smash it in, and I've done that a few times before. Uh, when you hear it going that fast, you kind of have to flare and give it a little bit of power. Okay, so we get this. I'm gonna try to hit this box here, but we're going too fast. Pull the power back, flare it up. We're still, oh, no, that was too fast a descent rate. I think I just bounced it. Yeah, I did. Yeah, we're going 150 knots there. Let me get over to the center line here. Yeah, that's the thing. Like I said before, you got to keep that descent rate going a little bit slower, and we're going a little bit too fast. If you if you're descending that fast and you've got that much speed, you're gonna bounce it. So I am. Uh, it's improving. I mean, I didn't crash, so I guess I'm headed in the right direction, but I definitely need to, to do this a little bit better. So let me try one more time here. Let me see if I can get this down. I think we can do this one more time and see how it goes. This would be better. All right. So we'll try to get the speed. No, nope. this is going down too fast. Flare. And, oh. I thought that was going to be another pounder, but that came out okay. And maintain the center line. This is looking good. All right. Yeah, that cadence that's still really fast. If you were to hear that in the actual plane, you're you're really gonna you're really gonna pound it in here. That that worked out okay. It seemed to be okay, and I maintained the center line. So, all right, three three landings, and uh, and I guess now I'm current on this flight sim here. Let me just. So now, how do I get out so I can see? in this outside of the plane here. Uh, oh, there we go. All right. Oh, cool, and the spoilers are up. That's cool. Now, normally in the actual plane, if you bring the power forward, that puts the spoilers down. Uh, I don't know how to make them go, but if I bring the power forward. Yeah, see, in the actual plane, what I just did there, bringing the power forward, that will actually cause those spoilers to go down. 
but uh, I'll just have to hit this button here. But man, this is a pretty cool. It's a pretty cool looking plane. It's obviously the passenger configuration. So where I was talking about those cubby holes, that would be a, a camera or a camera there, but not a camera, a TV there, so we can actually see people that are there when the flight attendants are coming. People are going in and out, so that way for safety. So that actually is a camera that we can see there. But yeah, this is pretty accurate. And we got our strobes and everything on. I'm not even really sure how to turn those off. Um, if I move the yoke, does it? I wonder if I. Now, if I move the yoke here and the ailerons, oh, it does. It moves the ailerons and the, all of that stuff. That's pretty cool. I obviously don't get to see, see stuff from this perspective very often, so it's kind of cool to see. The, you know, I mean, obviously, I, I know how it works, but it's still pretty interesting to, to see it. So that that's cool that it actually gives you those graphics as you as you move the ailerons and, and uh, elevator around. So that's cool. Let's go ahead and get off this runway, see if I can taxi this thing off. And uh, let's see here. We, how do we turn this thing? Okay. Oh, no, that's not. That's going to be very hard to taxi from. How do I get a... Okay, and that's up here. Oh. All right, so I'm just going to cruise over these lights and grass and over to the other side. <laughs> the taxi on this thing is actually pretty easy, but uh, we're going a bit fast and I can't see what's going on. So this is not good. How do I get back up above? This is, I don't know where I'm, oh, and I'm onto a runway. So, yep, I'm gonna be having to make a phone call. If that happened in real life, you'd be in a lot of trouble. So we'll just taxi off here and stop. Yeah, th th I, from this perspective, it's pretty easy to actually see what's going on. And, and actually, once you're on the flight deck and taxiing from the, f f as a normal person in an actual flight, you can actually see pretty well. There's little uh, gauges that you use as far as knowing when to turn and things like that. But it's, it's actually pretty easy to taxi as long as you just remember just the length of it. You can't turn it too short. But uh, I'll go ahead and get in here and set the parking brake. And yeah. That was actually pretty fun. I mean, there's obviously some things that aren't accurate as far as some of the some of the lights and stuff, the other things that I showed you in there, but it, that's actually pretty cool. And it, yeah, I, I totally can see why people play that. I, I think for people that are really into aviation, obviously most people, and there's a lot of pilots out there that are commercial airline pilots that want to fly a 747. Actually, the other day, I just when I caught a flight uh, coming out of LA, I was talking to one of the guys about it, and uh, I just went in and said hi, and they asked what I was flying. I said, I was on the 747. He's like, man, I'd love to fly that. We were on a 777, and that guy was saying that. And and so, yeah, it's cool. If, if you're really into aviation, I can see why this would be something you'd want to do for sure. If I had actually crashed a plane like you saw me do in that first landing, even though I was flaring, if I had actually hit a plane at that angle, I would have definitely had died. Unless, of course, I was Tom Hanks. Because no matter what plane he's in, even if he hits a wall of water in the middle of the ocean, he seems to be okay. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about Castaway. And if you haven't seen the Hollywood versus reality that I did on Castaway, I'll put a link to it right here. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.